As an infantry soldier of World War II, nothing could have been quite as terrifying as enemy tanks gunning for your position. The tanks of the era represented the pinnacle of shock weaponry, and their commanders gained legendary status. So lock and load guys, because these are five of the most formidable tank aces the war ever produced. The top US tanker of the entire Second World War and the inspiration for Brad Pitt's War Daddy character in the movie Fury, we have Lafayette Poole. Unlike the famous German tank aces who slogged it out on the Eastern Front for years, US tank forces began their fight against Germany in June 1944, and Poole himself fought in France between June and September. He was in combat for just 81 days, but in that time managed to rack up more tank kills than any other US tanker, on top of losing three tanks himself. Poole initially commanded an M4A1 Sherman tank which lasted him a week. On the 29th of June, he attacked the town of villers in Normandy. During the assault, his tank was hit by a Panzerfaust. Poole and his crew managed to clamber out of the burning wreckage and survive. Poole fared better with his second tank, a new M4A1 76W Sherman he picked up on July 1st. This one was destroyed a month and a half later on August 17th by friendly fire from a P-38 Lightning as Poole led US forces in clearing the village of Fromentor. Undeterred by multiple near-death experiences, Poole fought on with a second M4A1 76W Sherman commanding it until September when it was destroyed by a German panther defending the Siegfried line. The Sherman was obliterated by an armor-piercing round which threw Paul out of the commander's hatch, mangling his leg. Transferred back to the US, Paul's injury meant his war was over. He left France having destroyed 12 enemy tanks and 258 armored vehicles, having killed over 1,000 soldiers, and having taken an additional 250 as POWs. The war in France was rough on the tankers, but the real armored war was fought in the east, where high quality and complex German tanks slogged it out against unending waves of more simply made Soviet tanks. One of the Germans committed to this fight was Otto Karius. Karius showed a keen aptitude for tank strategy right from the start of his career as a tank commander. In one of his first engagements on the Leningrad front, he managed to destroy four Soviet Su-85 tank destroyers without the loss of a single one of his Tiger Ones, though his most spectacular moment was yet to come. On July 22, 1944, Kachios patrolled to the village of Malinava with his unit of eight Tiger One tanks. After personally scouting it out, he determined that Malinov was occupied by an advanced guard of Soviet tanks. When others may have called for backup, Karius decided the best option was to smash this spearhead as quickly as possible. Backed up by another Tiger One, Karius drove down the only road to the village. He deliberately kept six tanks in reserve so he had as much room to maneuver as possible. The two Tigers crashed into the village at close to top speed. Karius immediately encountered a Soviet IS-1 heavy tank, something he had never seen before. The veteran tanker acted rapidly, blowing apart the IS-1 with his first shot. Both Tigers then made quick work of the T-3485s around Malinava, destroying 17 of them in 20 minutes. This would not be the last of Otto Karius' deadly engagements, and by the war's end, he had destroyed over 150 enemy tanks and a plane. Although he only fought for two and a half months, Soviet tank ace Dmitry Lavrininko was by far the top allied tanker of the Second World War. Lavrininko took command of his first tank, a T-34, in October of 1941. Like his contemporary aces, he was a master tactician. His favorite strategy was to set up complex ambushes. 
On one occasion, Lavrininko ordered soldiers to place logs in position so they looked like anti-tank guns. When a German tank unit approached, they opened fire on the decoy, allowing Lavrininko and his men to annihilate them from a flanking position. There's no telling how successful Lavrininko may have been if he had actually lived out the whole of the war like most of the German aces did. Just after scoring his 50 second tank kill and securing a village, Lavrininko walked over to a radio to report the victory to his commander. The Allies' greatest tanker picked the wrong time for a stroll, as German mortar fire rained down when he stepped out into the open, peppering him with shrapnel and ending his life. Michael Wittmann became a household name in Germany and, to some extent, the world during the Second World War. This tanker was a legend and his victories were broadcasted as propaganda over the radio for the whole of Europe to hear. Wittmann joined the SS in 1936 and the Nazi party in 1938. His commitment to Nazi ideals caught the eye of the higher ups and he rapidly rose through the SS ranks. His first serious engagements were in 1941 where he first fought in the invasion of Greece and then in Operation Barbarossa where he destroyed several Soviet tanks with a Stug 3 and Panzer 3. But it was when he took command of a Tiger 1 in 1943 that he really began to shine, destroying 117 Soviet tanks. Wittmann was then transferred to France in April 1944. After the Normandy landings, his unit was ordered to halt the southward Anglo-American advance. The crux of this engagement was the Battle of villers bocage a tank battle fought in the namesake French village. Wittmann was the hero of this battle, recorded as destroying up to 14 enemy tanks alone after charging his Tiger I into the middle of the village. At least, that's what the Nazi propaganda machine wanted the world to believe. It's true that Wittmann had major success in tank battles, but historians now think this might be down to the machine, not the man. Wittmann fought with his Tiger I on the Eastern Front when it had no real match. Soviet light and medium tanks couldn't scratch it front on and the powerful German 88mm gun could smash through any Soviet armor. This all changed when the Allies showed up in France with the Sherman Firefly, a tank armed with a 17 pounder gun that could reliably take out a Tiger I. Even the German tacticians were quick to spot this issue, stating in a report, no longer can the Tiger I prance around oblivious to the laws of tank tactics. The Tiger I was a supremely powerful machine and this likely made Wittmann overconfident, especially after his success against the Soviets. Eventually, this got the better of him when he attacked an Anglo-Canadian tank force two months after the Battle of villers bocage Making his trademark head-on attack, the Tigers were blown to pieces by Allied armor. A direct hit blew the turret off Wittmann's tank, killing him and his crew instantly. Wittmann had been a formidable tanker, racking up 138 destroyed tanks and 132 anti-tank guns before he died. And finally, we've got not only the most successful tank ace of the Second World War, but the best armored vehicle commander in world history, the German tanker Kurt Knipsel. Knipsel was a humble man. He didn't boast the accolades of Germany's other aces, but what he did have was an ability to hunt tanks like no other. Much of this can be put down to his experience. Knipsel was a non-commissioned officer whose career began as a loader, then he became a gunner, eventually making it to Panzer Commander. These experiences gave him an intimate knowledge of every aspect of a tank's operation. In January 1943, Knipsel was sent back to Germany to train on the new Tiger I tanks. By this point, he had already been credited with 12 tank kills in a Panzer IV. Equipped with his new Tiger, Knipsel was hurled into the front line as part of the 503rd Heavy Panzer Battalion. His first engagement in his brand new Tiger I was the Battle of Kursk. In few places has the heat of battle burned hotter than at Kursk. Tasked with defending the eastern flank of the southern armored pincer, Knipsel and his Panzers were thrown against wave after wave of Soviet KV-1s, T-70s and T-34s. The better armored German tanks stood up well against their Soviet counterparts, but the weight of numbers was not in their favor. Knipsel and the other German Panzer units were pushed back, but not before destroying between 1,600 and 1,950 Soviet tanks. 
Knipsel saw almost continuous action until mid-1944, when his unit was pulled back from the line to receive new tanks, formidable Tiger IIs. After some fighting in France, they were sent back east. Defending against the unending Soviet advance, Knipsel scored tank kill after tank kill, the thick armor of his Tiger II protecting him. In one engagement, he recorded 24 direct hits to his Tiger, of which none penetrated. But armor can only hold strong for so long. While fighting in Germany on April 28, 1945, Knipsel's Tiger II was hit. The Soviet shell pierced his armor and cooked off the Panzer's ammunition. Knipsel was badly wounded and died hours later in a field hospital. He had 168 confirmed enemy tank kills, but it's believed that that number was closer to 200. He died only 10 days before the end of the war in Europe. Those were five of the top tank aces of the Second World War. Who were you most impressed with? How many tanks do you think Lavrininko would have destroyed had he lived longer? Think Wittmann was a genius of armored warfare or a propaganda man who relied too much on his heavy armor? Let us know in the comments. Additionally, this was an unexhaustive list, so if you'd like to see more about the war's best tankers, let us know and we could make a part two. And just before you abandon me guys, we have some exciting links in the description below, including the introduction of our new channel called The Braved, where we go even further back into history and take a look at some of the absolute singular badasses of different eras and times. So if that sounds like it tickles your fancy, go check that out. And if you want to listen to the music we use in some of our videos here on the front, and you want some music for your own creative projects, check out our Relax Jack music channel, where we post consistent uploads. And if you just want to join our wider community with exclusive content, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and our front Discord. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.